Okay, good evening, everyone. Right, the only announcement I've got as you as from last month is that next month's meeting on the I've already forgotten 19th of April, isn't it? Of course, we have Sophie Wilson coming to talk to us all about the future of microprocessors and to answer your questions, which I'm sure there'll be plenty. Um, that's my only announcement for now. So now I'm going to hand over to Daryl, who's going to tell us all about Derek. Thanks, Brian. Um, so yes, I'm going to talk about Derek. Uh, I have got a PowerPoint, but don't worry, I'm not going to kill everyone by showing 50 slides. Just a just a little bit of PowerPoint. Then I'll show some stuff on RISCOS, and then I'll probably show some stuff on Windows. And there's a reason for that that will become apparent later. So if I share my screen first. I, I, well, I am a sort of sales guy by trade, so I do apologize for <laughs> using PowerPoint, but uh, uh, something like I say, it's only a few slides. So that background there I did in Derek, by the way, the vector graphics and stuff, heavily inspired by sort of 80s. So who am I? Um, so in my real life, I'm a pre-sales engineer doing, well, I used to do face-to-face demos uh, but these days of course it's all all over zoom calls and teams calls etc but i'm more on the development side than well these days more on the development side so i'm building other tools etc and i use a bunch of languages on a weekly basis uh, so I'm, I'm kind of used to switching around between different programming languages so what my history like many uh <laughs> most of us start on the bbc micro in this case the master 128 I got as a kid in 86, I think 87 or whatever. Uh, I did have a Spectrum before that, but that was mainly just for games. So I started coding on it, came to assembly language, did the various, you know, the Aconsoft Lisp was it fourth and BCPL, I think there was a few of them. Um, I, I did all, I used all those. Um, now the Archimedes came out in what, 87, 88 or something, 87, I think. And I wanted one, but I was too young to buy one and I could never justify it. And my dad worked for ICL at the time and he got basically PCs for free. So fortunately ended up moving on to PCs, DOS, Windows, uh, OS2, uh, which I quite liked, it was pretty, pretty powerful. Windows was pretty terrible in comparison. Uh, and, then I, and then at some point I got an A4000, for basically nothing. This was before the retro scene really took off. So it was, I don't know, I think years and years. Fortunately, it's broken because the battery leaked and I tried to fix it and desoldered a bunch of stuff. So I'm not an expert. So at some point, hopefully get that working again. And then I got a Pi 1, uh, which is really where I rejoined RiscOS. Now I have been on the forums since before Acorn kind of collapsed. Uh, the icon bar and stuff. I've not posted very much, the odd thing, but I've, I I read studiously almost everything that was posted on there and the various ag agreements and disagreements and about how it all gone with the various paths of the operating system and the hardware, you know, and the Ionix, et cetera. It was all very, all very interesting. But the Pi is definitely where my journey starts again with the operating system. So what is Derek? And uh, I do apologize for the color scheme there on the Derek, but it, it, I'm trying to go for a kind of 1980s TV, <laughs> I suppose, or 70s TV with the stickers on there. So that's that's the, the bit of a splash of color. Um, so many, many projects in Blitz Basic, which became Blitz Max, which is a sort of modern, modern basic with inbuilt graphics commands, compiles down to native. So it was very, very fast. Uh, and that's really a heavy inspiration as well. So I've got a bunch of projects in Blitz that I would love to port over to Risk OS. Um, I tried to create something that has sort of the uh, interactive immediate mode of basic world because I learned to code in the 80s. And if you can, you can, when well, my camera's back on, you, you'll better see behind me that I've got my input magazines. That's where I learned to code, that immediacy. So that was pretty important to me. Um, but I would point out that it isn't BBC Basic, and you'll you'll see why later. And uh, I'm not trying to be BBC Basic either, because yeah, no point to that. 
Uh, so Derek, there's no real memory limits. It's got a 32-bit bytecode address space, plus all sprites and everything sits on top. So really, it's effectively unlimited space. It's interpreted uh, using a VM rather than tokenized. So classic basics are tokenized, and then that, that's interpreted. And you can do things such as re, re, re-signing, re-signing the variable A can be a string one minute and an integer the next, et cetera. So this can't, this is, this is sort of statically to tight and it uh, uses a VM underneath. Um, so I've got a window, I've got it running on Windows, which is where I do most of my development because Visual Studio is pretty capable for debugging uh, C++ stuff. But uh, RISC-OS, it's the same code as any of the older operating system stuff. So on RISC-OS, I don't use, you know, ask plot to do lines and things. I do all that myself. And on Windows, uh, I just call, it's using SDL, but I just plot a pixel and everything else is done in, in Derek itself. Reason being is I wanted exactly the same experience on both or all systems. So the graphics look the same, the fonts render the same, everything's exactly the same. So that's why I did that. And also because why not? Because they started as a bit of fun and it still is a bit of fun. And I like doing algorithms. So I decided to do all, I mean, they're well known, aren't they? Brazen names, but lines and circles. So I, I uh, coded all those on top of basically single pixel plot routine. And there is a 3D engine in there. It's all software. Again, another thing I enjoy doing. Um, so it doesn't use OpenGL or anything of that, of that nature. And as a result, it's only so fast, but uh, it's fast enough for, 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 for many things. Why did I create it? Uh, it's a bit of a journey. Um, so I said I bought a Pi. Stored risk OS. I never used Linux on it, to be honest. Never, not interested. So I stored risk OS. Um, started having a play around, remembering the, you know, the operating system and the commands, star commands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I got inspired at some point to recreate Zarch, and why not? Because uh, I have fond memories of it. Started in Basic, but was too slow, uh, mainly because I'm lazy and I like to use floating point rather than trying to use integer math. You, know, you can do all sorts of tricks. Well, I wanted to keep it simple, but it was too slow. So then I started on a graphics library. I did that in ARM assembly. So BBC basic inline assembly. Um, started on that, was very quick, uh, but was a bit of a pain to debug and maintain. I'm not a big fan of assembly language. I can do it, but I, to do anything, substantial and it gives me kind of scares me a little bit so then i started on using c which was gcc uh, i got some help on the rule forums because i was struggling a little bit but i managed to make it work i used vfp for performance although that really that older version would actually run without vfp it's just a compile flag um but it needs it to get any kind of speed out of it and then i showed it in london 2019, I had, I, uh, it was almost a spur of the moment thing. So I rocked up with, you can see in that left hand picture there, a uh, little pie in a BBC micro case and a screen and a keyboard. That's basically all I had. Um, and uh, I showed some, um, my, my, the 3D engine. I got a head spinning head there, which I'll show later. And some, and enough people seemed interested. And I thought, okay, where can I? You know, where can I take this? I won't I just abandon it. So at this point, I had it running on, on RISC OS as a module called from BBC Basic, and it worked. Uh, but it wasn't ideal as far as trying to create this sort of thing. So every time I, I made a code change, I had to recompile it. I had to kill the old module, essentially, reload it. And the compilation itself was slow. GCC, we know, isn't particularly quick. Risk OS, it's it's not great. Um, so as as it expanded, it got more and more. I mean, a few seconds is okay, but when you start getting to twenty seconds, it's it's a little annoying to do a code change and wait that long for a for a compile, especially if there's only a very minor change. And also, I didn't like the way that I had to talk to the three D stuff. So. I mean, I am not an expert in the operating system. I'm, I'm not going to claim there are plenty of other people who are have helped me at various points. But I, the how to get floating point data through to the module in a nice, easy way from BSpace, I couldn't really solve. So what I did is I just brute forced it. 
and bit shifted everything. So multiply by 256 in flow, bit shift to the right once it hits the module and convert back to flow. And that worked perfectly well. It gave me enough precision and was quick enough. Um, so that's that's how I did it, but they're not, they're not great. So the next stage, because I said this isn't some commercial project, it's a bit of fun. I got a PyTube Direct for my master, which was amazing. And I thought, why don't I try and port my 3D stuff? What he'd done with Doom, and I thought, okay, I can I can do that. I can do something similar. We spoke about how to get data over the tube, and he was saying that he never had to wait for the the Pi was always way faster than it needed to be. So I thought, okay, this is doable. We could do 3D on a on a BBC master with a Pi tube direct. But uh, the the basic that ran on there didn't support VFP. So that's really where I where I got to where I am now. So I wanted to try and create this arch. So originally it was on RiskOS, and then I changed my mind and decided on the, the, on the master. And but be it BAS 135, whatever, it didn't have VFP support because it's, it's old school, I guess it's FPA or whatever. Um, but I could do, again, in, in line assembly and, and compile it, and sorry, and assemble it down and run it on the PyTube Direct, but that was tedious and I'm not particularly patient and I have a full-time job and three kids and everything else and I don't have time for that. So I decided the, the way to do this was on the Pi is have a basically a run a runtime running on the Pi tube direct that ran my byte codes uh, with VFP, which, which seemed like a great idea. I'll, I'll stick to BBC basic files because that means I can edit the files on the BBC micro itself. Uh, so I kept the same source file format and I figured that right how hard could it be to write my own my own language um, so inspired by various people who have done it I figured yeah let's go for it and Pi Basic version one was born so this time uh, it was just a tiny little project running on on, on the master one two a a few byte codes, it could do some 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 simple stuff. But um, as I as I started to create it, I realized because I started moving back to I moved back to RiskOS for to develop the BBC Basic stuff on on there, and I discovered that I was getting good performance out of this because it is because it's a VM, everything statically typed. It it can make lots of decisions at compile time that normally have to be done at runtime. You know, we have when you've got an if then else or a, or a go to or whatever else, you've got to scan through tokens to find. Whereas I can make all those decisions at compile time, and as a result, it was a bit quicker in some situations, not all, but considering it was written in C um, with a reasonable footprint in memory, not, not the sort of tiny 60, whatever 60k that BBC Basic 5 is. Um, I, uh, yeah, I was, I thought that, that was, that was pretty encouraging. So, what I, but I wanted to get my 3D stuff in, in there, my 2D and 3D stuff, and we could use, I wanted to keep the standard, obviously, if I'm keeping to the BBC basic tokenized format, then I'm constrained by the tokens that I've got that I've got in there. So one option is to use functions or whatever. I even looked at maybe having variables. So as it reads in the file, it finds a variable. So you've got an example there, create vertex, reads that variable in, Converts it to an internal token and runs that, and that was fine. Um, but then I bought a book, <laughs> and these things always have a habit of changing direction. Though. That's why I bought a book on Flex and Bison, which are the G, uh, GNU open source tools for compiler generation. Thought it looked pretty amazing, and actually, it's it's it is pretty good. Uh, so I, but I, so in the process, I removed my BBC Basic compatibility requirement, targeted at Risk OS. And then version two. And I'm, again, I'm not trying to kill you with PowerPoint, so I'll quickly move through. So version one and two I've covered. Version three, I had to go hand rolling a tokenizer and parser, but because I wanted to handle pretty complex syntax, I decided it's just not worth the benefit. Uh, version four. So version three was the time that somebody on Twitter, I don't know who, I can't remember now, but suggested the name Derek, so that, that stuck. On version four, I did a pretty big reworking of it. I added a debugger, 
which I'm going to show later. True type font support. Now that isn't using SDL true type, whatever it was a it was a uh, public domain thing I found online, which is really good. So it's the same rendering on RISC OS as on Windows as whatever else. Um, I moved to primarily developing it on Visual Studio because it, I could develop it faster. And there is an argument, you know, the whole discussion about developer tools, but I could I build and debug much, much, much quicker, which which helped. And I cross compiled from Linux for RISC OS. And uh, that was the first one I put up for sort of public test download, I guess. Uh, and a few people made suggestions on it. But then, of course, uh, version five decided to change again because I bought a new book and I was not happy with some of the parser stuff with the one I, the one I had. So I moved to add something called Ampla 4, which is very, very capable. I uh, went for full screen because previously I had a windowed mode and a full screen mode. So I went full screen as, as default, moved to C++, and I guess some would say productionizing it. I mean, I don't like that term, but I removed a lot of the unsafe stuff in there. It's it's pretty standard C++, but there's, there isn't a new and delete in there. It's all uh, it's all pretty good about memory management. Um, I also wanted to improve the experience, so I improved errors. Prior to that, the thing about wow, that was it, Flex and Bison, the errors were terrible, were really, really bad. They basically, it was just error. With, with Antler, I could, I could enhance the errors to give much more information. You'll see that later, after. I'll show you that in a bit, how I've, how I've done that. Because I use other languages in my day-to-day -day life, Rust in particular has got really, really good error messages, and I tried to emulate that. So that's version five, which is what I'm going to show. And, I've, and now I'm currently doing version six. Now this, this is the bit that uh, might upset some people, but I'm not great. I'm not, this isn't BBC basic. This is, this is something different. As I'm moving away from the syntax because I want to add things that I need, such as maps and lists and sets and, and, and more complex structures. And I can't do that within the confines of the BBC basic syntax because you've only got, you've got the percent sign and the, the pling and the dollar, but it starts getting really, really messy. Um, if I'm sticking to the syntax, it get, I have to start coming up with weird and wonderful ways of managing that. I don't want to do that. I wanted it to be clean, clean syntax. So version six pretty breaks away pretty heavily, uh, but it is a much better thing as a result. So, and it's going to have a, a whole object oriented side to it as well, which I'll come to in a bit. Uh, so yes, this is all about scratching an itch as, as the best projects really are. So I, I've done a lot of stuff in various languages, Java and Blitz particularly as far as games go. And some screenshots here of a game I have, I never, never actually got it to release. I've got 95% there, but 35,000 lines of Java code in there. Uh, heavily concurrent using all the threads. And I tuned, tuned the Java virtual machine to death. That thing runs smooth. There's no pauses, no anything. Uh, JavaFX is the live graphics library that it runs in, uh, but that's running at sort of 60 frames a second of animated graphics with, phys it's a physics based model for, you know, you can zoom in and out of the, the solar system maps and things. So that was uh, something I did before, and that's the sort of thing I'd like to create again. So uh, really that's where my inspiration comes from. So this all, I know this all looks very official, but it's not really, but I, so what do I want? It helps it helps with the project to actually know what I'm trying to do with this. So experience, fun, it's got to be fun, otherwise I'm, you know, I'm not going to enjoy it. Clean syntax, as in I don't want, I don't want to be bolting stuff onto a, a, a syntax that already exists because it, you know, it can't be extended. BBC basically came from, was it, 1981? Probably earlier for the Atom, I don't know. But um, it's, 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 it's been around a while. Um, and so I'm sort of moving away from that. Cross-platform is important. Windows, Risk OS, Mac, whatever else. So I want the same, same experience in each. The interactive mode is the prompt, isn't it? It's where you do 10 print high, 20 go to 10, except I'm dumping line numbers now, but I have got line numbers in the version I'll show. So the interactive mode is important. Um, batteries included. This is really because I, I don't like I suffer, suffer a bit with this with Python, is you've got to go and pip install various bits and pieces to actually, I don't, I don't really want to do that. I want to just hit the keyboard and 
start creating stuff straight away. So that's my, you know, I want everything in there and, and fairly static as well, not, not, not changing too much. Uh, near instant run. So yes, load programming memory, the moment run is here, it needs to be near, near instant. Now that I'm using C++, I'm using a parser, gener you know, compiler generator, essentially all these things, but I'm, I want, an, I still want it to run instantly. I don't want to be any pauses because that, that annoys me when I'm, that was always a complaint of blitz basic was that you had to sit there and wait for it to compile. So instant run, graphics, there's nothing, there's nothing uh, particularly special there. 2D, 3D, immediate and banked. So immediate is you draw a line on the screen, you see it straight away. Banked is, is you know, the page flipping stuff. Uh, hardware acceleration where possible, not so much on risk OS, two type sprites. Entity model is a game thing for sure, not general program and language stuff. So that is where we create an object, whether it's a 2D object or a 3D object, and then we can figure out if these things have collided or whatever else. So that's, that's because we, otherwise you end up with a whole load of void of code to move things around and manage whatever they hit each other. And it's a bit, it can get a little bit tedious and bugger ridden. I know this because I did that game before where I had 20,000 objects that I had to work out collisions and things and it gets, it gets a little bit tedious. So I want an entity model and then tile maps. Some of that stuff is gamey, but, but not all of it. And then sound, which I haven't even got anywhere near yet because it's definitely not a strong point, but I spoke to various people and we discussed on previous call as well, isn't it? That using software synthesis in some way, um, like the Amcog stuff maybe, but I haven't even got to that yet. Um, only a couple more and then I'll show some stuff. Um, so some of this is, is opinionated, isn't it? But so I've got, he uses that in the four as a parser, which is, unless you're gonna write your own, which is not, it's not, it's not that difficult necessarily, but it gives me, an awful lot of flexibility using a, a generator, but it's it's really powerful. So I don't see any reason why I can't mix languages together in the same file. So I like the idea of, because um, I do a bit of web development in my day-to-day -day job, the idea of having HTML inside a, a language file, you know, the source code file with parameters. So you can create, in theory, a web page straight from the language, that'd be nice. But um, it also handles, all sorts of complex grammar that I know BBC Basic sometimes trips up on, if then else, I think there's certain situations where it's not happy, whereas this is effectively, there's no real limitations to that. Um, it is compiled, so it's a three-phase compiler, look ahead, goes and figures out what functions and procedures we've got, goes and figures out, because I've got structured types, goes and figures structured types. Sizing is a compile run without compiling, so that's to figure out. So if you're doing, because it's a VM and you want to call a procedure at a certain place or go to a certain line, that it needs to know the address of that. So the first phase is compile it and then figure out forward references. And then third phase is actually go and do that. Compiles to my own VM, a bit arrogant, but I didn't, I don't like overhead. The JVM is quick, but it's not, it's not always quick on, on slower systems. So I wanted my own that I've got complete control of. And I did do a native, um, because it's statically typed and everything I do, I consider whether I can compile it down to native, you know, and, and get all the benefits of that. And I've done, I did one a while ago. So the if then, so for loops, for example, get converted into standard C for loops and compiled. And that was about 20 times faster, which was nice, but I'm not really sure it's necessary yet it's quick enough quick enough just interpreted um so stack based vm that's that's not rocket science it's been done plenty of times before the java vm is is stack based like the python one probably is as well um the each of the byte codes has a flag essentially that, that shows which type so i can easily extend out to to, to more types integer string and flow is, i mean real numbers that's that's pretty much covers most things, but I want to cover sets and lists and hash maps and stuff. I don't need to feel the need to add booleans and things because it's one thing annoys me is having to make those choices. I just want a number that's a fixed point number and that's, I'll let the system work it out. Um, there is a debugger, it's debugger's a bit of a grand title for it, but it's, there is something there. I'm going to extend it though. 
uh, and you can you can see the value of current variables. That's nice. You can basically hit a key in the middle of it running, and it, it'll tell you what it's running and state of variables, etc. It does have a trace on trace off. This full login that that gets pretty heavy. There's a every every single operation is logged. So every add, subtract, jump, everything. It's all all logged, and you can view it instantly by just pressing a key, and it pops up. I'll try and show that later, but we'll, we'll see if I get it to work. And then breakpoint's quite nice. Uh, again, none of this is new, but breakpoint, it just goes straight into the debugger at that point. So you, you can see what's going on. It's all C++ 11, standard stuff, not deviating at all. Uh, on Risk OS, it uses native call file system calls for things and native, so it's all native operating system. Uh, with the exception of the moment as I write direct to video memory, but actually, it's, it's two lines of code. We could easily just go through the operating system routine. So I'm, I'm, it's not, it's, it's a proper cross platform thing as I've, you know, as the code, it's not hacked on RiskOS. Actually RiskOS runs better in some situations as you'll see. It's all in memory. So it's, it's not, it's not like a proper compiler that writes into me files that I think done in memory. And it has a pretty low footprint as well, really. Oh, this little bit of boring thing, but I'm a bit of a language, uh, Bit of a language person, I suppose, and I've done. I've used pretty much every language going. So this is the standard benchmark I have of my own. But I do in all all of my, the languages that I work in. So I measure CPU usage, how long it actually takes to run, how much memory, lines of code, and um, there is there's like a fuller version of this. That also has how I measure whether I'm productive in or not, and I get a, basically a score. So you can see there, Pi Basic. This was the earlier version one stuff, right down the bottom there, just below Ruby, which was not bad for an early early iteration. And then the one on the right is when I did the native compile stuff, because it's basically C, you know. So the potential there. Um, nearly there now. <laughs> I'm going to show some stuff. So I have had some issues. Now I, I know that this is not a well-trodden path necessarily, but uh, so the original sort of inbuilt GCC is missing some standard stuff that I needed. So that, that was annoying. So when I tried GCC 8, he found the same behavior. So there's a bug somewhere. Um, there's a few things with it not supporting Y characters and things, but I could, I could work all around that. The problem with the exception one is, uh, you'll see when, when I show you, is it's fine for running, but if, you, if there's a syntax error, and it raises an error, it just crashes straight out. But uh, I hope that this could be fixed because everything else works. You know, I haven't tried GCC 10 yet. Uh, I think we're nearly there. So, benefits of Risk OS obviously, we all know these. It's stable, well documented, that helps. So, it's not a moving target. You get full control of the system, which is nice. And I've done a, quite a bit of development on, on Windows, and it's, it's crazy. It, it moves, everything, the whole thing is a moving target. So tool, there's so many toolkits and so many ways of doing it and, and you, you create a new project and there's masses and masses of, boiler, of boilerplate code and it's, it's nasty, it really is. Whereas risk OS is, is straightforward. Okay. Um, let me stop my share for a minute. Are there any questions? Hopefully I didn't bore everybody with all those slides. It, so, it sounds like an impressive job so far. So um, thanks. Well, it, it's a it's a it's a labor of love, isn't it? So I've it's been going for a few years, and I I keep. But when you when you really enjoy doing something, I can't put it down. I will keep extending it. But let me try and. So what I'm going to show first mm -hmm. is picture, and of course this thing with the errors uh, is a little bit annoying. But all right, I'm going to. Hopefully this will work. Test it. I tested it earlier work, so can we see that? Yep. Ah, good stuff. So a little awkward for me because the screen, the screen I'm looking at with, with the pies on the left and the pies on the right. So I've got to stretch about two meters across the room to do this. But so I have an icon. Uh, thanks to Nemo for the icons. But if I uh, so I could just run it, you know, it's just, it's a Standard, standard risk OS application, and I can do a simple. We're all familiar with this, and this is obviously heavily inspired by. Just, uh, just a quick thing: there is a double line on the print. You know, and that will cause it to crash. 
<laughs> you know, this is the thing where the screen's on the left and I've got to type on the right. You can't actually see what I'm typing very easily, but. Uh, oops, there we go again. Classic. And then we can list. You would expect. Oops. Oh, there we go. As if on cue. Let's do it once more time. Uh, oh dear. I've killed it. I'm gonna have to reboot the thing. Okay, wait for that to reboot. Yeah, that is a little annoying. And it is it is actually uh, pretty reliable apart from that. It's not as though it crashes out for anything else. It's just that one thing on the exceptions. Well, I know that C++ isn't the language of choice necessarily. All right, let that boot up. Escape to, all right. So we're back on my icons. Are we can, can we see everything? I can't really see the, the top, there we go. Yes. I shall be, I shall type a little slower. So I get this right. Uh, everybody's first program. There we go. Escape to, to stop it. Oh, I spell it is wrong as well. Well done. And um, I can do F10, hold F10, and it comes up with the little bit at the bottom, and I can see disassembly. But I'll get a little bit more of an interesting program up before I show that. Well, we can see it quickly for that. It's not very simple. There's a little bit of byte code, but it's not very exciting. Um, so let me show some source code. And there's a bunch of things in here. There is a welcome menu. This is this is just a standard thing that, that I, I've done. You can see the true type fonts there, which are quite which I find quite nice. And they do they are anti-aliased as well. With a slight CPU penalty to do it. But I'm not going to run them from there. I'm going to run them from here instead. And if we start, what should we start? 2D graphics. So not particularly uh, exciting, but it is quick. So this is where I started. I'll do it again. You probably don't even probably. I don't know how well it comes over Zoom, but you know it's it's pretty it's pretty quick. It's even doing uh, basically garage shaded triangles and stuff in there. That's why I needed the VFP because there's there's a fair bit of floating point going on in there. But it's it's quick. And that was the, that's where I started. And then I built on top of that 3D. And we've got some spinning cubes there. I mean, I know that's not particularly difficult for but 60 frames a second of, so that's all in software. There's no, you know, not, you know, hardware obviously to call. I mean, on the Pi, I guess there is, but this isn't doing that. So there is, a, that will limit what it can do, but I'll show you in a bit that still does pretty well, actually. Um, fonts, so you can load your own, I can, well, I can load my own true type fonts in there and display them. The bit at the bottom with the circles and lines and stuff, that's just to show how everything all blends together um, uh, and looks, looks, looks pretty nice. I think that, I think the fonts are really nice. The standard remote, I've, I've changed my font so many times over, I'm happy with those. Um, greedy is not very interesting. That's my benchmark algorithm. So it's not particularly interesting for anybody else, but it is for me. Um, oh, Mandelbrot. Hey, black and white. Code of this I get off, I've got offline somewhere. Um, what I will do, um, I didn't mean to, that wasn't the key I pressed. Let me try again. Oh, I know why. I know why. Let's do this. Set directory and load. Okay, and run. And if I do it in here, so I press F10 and I get my little debugger. This is all going to change because I figured a much better way of doing all this. But if I go for disassembly, we can see a bit of. Byte code. 
nothing. It's it's not it's not it's nothing particularly unique or special, but it, it shows you the line that it comes from. I've, like I said, I figured a much better way of doing this, where I'm going to combine the, the source lines with the with the bytecode, etc. But uh, that's what it that's what it ultimately executes. So you've got to opcode. It's basically like a bit of assembly language, isn't it? Opcode, type, and then variable name or function name or whatever else. And then variables. So that's the current in memory variables. The, I'm going to have the option to change all these at some point. I don't think I've got anything logged. No. And but then we can continue, and off it goes on its merry way. So. And it, again, like I say in the code, if we put, if we use the break word, uh, breakpoint keyword, it'll just stop at any point, and then we can use trace on trace off to get full logging, and it is pretty extensive logging. Okay. So that's the debugger. Um, show fonts. Show map quick. But the source for that. So if we I need strong ed. Where are we? Should probably show some source code. Uh, so I think. So it looks like that, look, that one looks like particularly standard BBC basic. Uh, the first one, the Q's one. So this is where um, I'm not afraid of basically adding new keywords in. So we can see we set a graphics mode, a banked mode. So it's bank switching. Uh, there's a function there to get a random color. And then this is how I build up my shape. So I just went for the simplest. So this is really how the original module did that I showed. You create each vertex in turn. So this bit here, is, a vertex 3D is a structured type. So there's structured types in here. Vertex 3D has got X, Y, Z, uh, real numbers. And we create a, a, an array of eight. And we set these eight points to be points of a cube and give them a random color. Let me It's a bit tricky because I'm going to stretch you. But so then we build our triangle faces. So each each square, it's, it's, uh, each, it's made out of two of these. These are vertex indices, and then we call through again on the keyword there statement. Well, it's a function, isn't it? Really, that so we call shape with our list of vertices, list of faces, and it returns as a shape handle. And later on down here, show frames per second. Uh, create a cube and then we create two cubes at uh, different x y z's and rotations and scaling factors the solid and wireframe is yeah solid wireframe shaded whatever uh, graphics and then i rotate these through 360 degrees at half a degree turn each uh, close the screen rotate render it flip so back buffer to front buffer if there's a key press delete the objects back to the welcome menu so that's for that cube spinning cube there's not a great deal of code and and so did that one sprites isn't working quite yet on this so I'll, i won't cover that one terrain demo let's do that one i'll show you this one for a long while and i do i do like it so it's pulling noise algorithm to generate you know the peaks and, and, and whatever and it turns into a shaded so this is garage shaded basically. Runs fairly quick. I'm going to frame 15 frames per second for a reasonable number of polygons there. This didn't run, run so well on RPC, you know, on the emulator, it was a lot slower, obviously, but on hard, real, real hardware, it's nice and quick. And I'll have a tester. This is just to make sure that I don't break things standard test rig, if you like, so test all the syntax changes. Um, the terrain, let me open that source one up actually. As you can tell, I haven't got a real plan here. I'm just gonna go through and show some interesting stuff. So create terrain, build the vertices, build the faces. Is it is it grass, is it rock, is it snow? And then same bit of code here to rotate it around. Create an object. Switch to graphics banked mode, and then and this calls through to a couple of libraries I've got on here: terrain, and then 
So this, you know, just standard install to pull in the other source files. That's the one I just showed, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's terrain demo, the, the stub one. So terrain calls through to Perlin. And yeah, this does pretty, pretty, there's not much in there really. That generates the nice, the nice terrain. Um, I will show this because this is where this is what I, I showed an earlier version of this uh, in 2019. So I start off, I had the male head in the teapot. So if I go male head and let's do smooth shaded, obviously takes a bit more grunt. So let's just go solid shaded. It's loading it in. This is all done in Darit. So there's no, it's, it's basically Darit code on that reads in a 3ds max was it wavefront wavefront object file does some stuff adjust size and there we go so that's about 150,000 polygons i think so i was quite happy with that as, as as software you know pure software rendering performance it looks good it's light source single only a single light source but you know that's light source 15 frames now if i really want to push it this model is huge I think it's a million polygons or a million and a half or something. Solid shader. It'll take a while even to load in. Uh, it doesn't do textures and things yet um, because, you, as you can tell, I've been working on the language itself rather than the 3D stuff. Now I'll, I'll come back around. It will take a while to load. So it's not that it's crashed, but uh, this is a pretty pretty heavy duty. How many faces? Oh, half a million. So half a million triangles. So the normalizing size is we want it to be a constant. You know, all the models have got different different sizes when you download them or create them, and that just normalizes it so it's a sensible size for the screen. There's a fair chunk of calculation going on there. So it's worked out an adjustment, and it runs through again. Each of the vertices builds triangles from it all. So this is really a, a kind of, this is as much, so I can see how fast Derek is and how fast the 3D stuff really is. Okay, building faces, get in there. Runs pretty quick on a PC as you'd expect. I might show it on PC as well. But the important thing of course is the code, all these demos, all the, the code is exactly the same, whether it's running a risk OS or Windows or whatever, it's all, it's all the same code and it renders exactly the same. Which, which was important for me. So that's, uh, we're not gonna get many frames per second, but that's half a million triangles all being software, you know, off software rendered. So that, that is pushing it a bit. It's a nice model. It has dimples on the, the break distance things. So about two frames a second. But that's, I mean, I'm quite happy with that considering what it's actually doing. Okay. And I think I'm running out of demos on here to show now. I've got world in lines. And so let's go every point. So this has got every, it's got a polygon for every country, every island in, in the world, 246 different files. That's definitely missing some stuff. Let me, it's probably colors rather than mapping. Let me try again. I noticed this earlier. Let's render more points. So it's reading in all of these polygons and then skipping points uh, for stuff, but anyway. So everything is actually there. We can scroll this, although it's now, let me drop back to a more sensible level of, if we go for this one. I'll show you the source code for this as well. So we can scroll it around. So what it's doing, obviously each time we, move the mouse, it's recalculating, replotting all the points. I can zoom in and out. And so we can go up to France or Germany or whatever. Again, the, all the countries are there, it's just that the colors, it's, it's choosing random color of black. Zoom out, pan it. What I can do as well, I like this effect, is I can animate it. I quite, I quite like that. 
I think that's very interesting. So what he's doing is it's just increasing the accuracy each time. It's nice. So that runs on, I've got a folder in here, GIS, and this has got, yeah, there's, there's a lot of data. So each, each country is, let me stop sharing for a minute. I don't know if there's any questions. Uh, so that was on, that's obviously running on proper risk OS. No, on a there was a question in the chat. What was the computer that you used for the demo? Uh, that was a Pi 2B plus. Yeah, it was a Pi, yeah, Pi 2B plus, Pi 2B, something like that. Well, that's very cool. I mean, given the, the performance of the Pi 2, really impressive. Yeah. Um, it, it's, all, it's all software. There's nothing, there's, I mean, none of it, the algorithms and stuff are all out there. Uh, you can see I've got a bunch of books behind me. Some of them are very good. Um, it's, all come out, it's all come out of that. And it is using hardware floating point because I didn't really want to start doing fixed point math and everything. Uh, I thought it's, it's 2019 or 2020, 2021. Should be using the, the processor hardware ready. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy. Is that's pushing it? I mean, that's half a million. It wouldn't be pushing it on the PC using hardware acceleration, but for software, that's pushing it. But you can chuck around 100,000 polygons. The actual the rendering of the triangles and things isn't the bottleneck. Generally, it's the 3D stuff behind that that, that slows it down. It can it can create triangles pretty quickly. I am going to switch to Windows in a minute and show because I can show the interactive stuff a little bit better because it doesn't crash when I mistype and it's a bit clearer as well. So I want to do that in a minute. When we have no more questions, can I just ask uh, was the main focus uh, for games or just general purpose, anything that needs you know, 3D? Yeah, I, I would say games are part of it because I like to create them and it's, it's fun. But generally, I would say graphical, interactive stuff. Uh, yeah. You saw the World in Lines one, which, I, which <laughs> was something I did. Did that back in Blitz, basically, actually. That, that's quite nice. So, you know, bring all the polygons and render them on screen. I like to do graphical stuff. So there's definitely a graphical element to it. But I will say that the, the language that I've created is, is definitely a general purpose. Uh, once I get maps and sets and lists and things, which I, I really struggle to, to do stuff without those structures, unfortunately, because once you've been using them as a, as a purpose, most of these sort of projects do. And there is a hardware acceleration option in there and you can use, you can get it to plot things a bit quicker. But I actually didn't make that much of a difference. It didn't work for some things. So if you want to do the kind of garage shading, you still, you still basically plot pixel by pixel. It, it yeah. doesn't offload it to the hardware. Um, so the, the 2D stuff's pretty quick. But again, this, I mean, there's an SDL graphics library out there that covers a lot of these things as well. I'm not doing anything particularly new, um, but I am, you can see on when it runs on risk os it instantly runs so even though it's it's doing the bytecode compilation and everything else it's, it's instant that's really important to me the memory footprint's really low the executable is about 2.8 meg yeah. um but it, in memory it runs in a couple of meg in in, in memory yeah. depending on what you load it so performance on lower hardware definitely matters to me I'm yeah well that's as far as I can see, it's, it's absolutely brilliant for risk costs, you know, and if you, this is on a Pi 2, 3 is going to go faster, 4 presumably faster again. Yeah, it runs 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 pretty snappy. In fact, some things run better on the Pi than they do on the Windows version. Uh, I don't know if you remember when you saw the testing, uh, because yeah. of the way that, because I have access to the video hardware pro properly, uh, when I the, the test one, it, it did print tests and input tests and all these, you know, tan, hot, all the rest of it. it it scrolls so quickly because i can just move the memory uh whereas yeah. on windows you've got to go through the hardware acceleration layers and all it's not actually quite so straightforward i mean you can make it work but not in a nice way yeah. i don't I what i don't want to do is have a thousand lines of risk os code and a thousand lines of windows code for the same function i want to have yeah. five lines and five lines or whatever you know so i don't yeah. want them, i want them to stay together you know, yeah. not, not diverge too too much. Yeah. Where does support the wing programming? Um, was it like GUI stuff? Yeah. Yes, there is uh, on one of my on a slide I've got later on. There's like a couple of closing slides. That is definitely something I have in mind because I um, 
because it's actually okay. Let's let's say it's no faster than previous. Basically, it's no faster, but it's got all these extra bits and pieces. Um, there's no reason why we couldn't use it for applications. It's not the JVM. It's not going to take ten seconds. Yeah. To, it, you know, it doesn't have JIT. Although uh, I could add it at some point. It doesn't have any of these things, but it it it's pretty much instant. And let's be honest, if we're running on modern, the Pi is a modern piece of hardware. It it isn't going to sniff at an eight meg run. You know, running in memory and things. So it's more than quick enough. Uh, so yes, I have some 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 um, some ideas for it. But let me show. I, I mean, I, I was going to switch to Windows and show some interactive stuff. But I, I mean, I don't know if I need to. Or maybe. Uh, oh, the syntax errors. I was going to show the errors because um, because it's a bit, effectively it's a, a three layer thing. So we've got uh, there's a parser in there that the antler four thing. So we get syntax errors the way I handle all these. So I'm going to just basically just hack some code together and show how that works. So let me share my screen again, or not again, share my screen, um, and switch to put it running down here. So this is, this is, um, it's exactly the same build as it was on RISC-OS. It's the same, same code. Um, and in the source code, there's just, you know, if risk OS do this or if Windows do the other or, or whatever. But it's all, it's all the same. So I can show you the same welcome stuff. Um, see, same, it's no, it's no different. Um, it did just change the resolution though. So let me, let, me, let me fire it back up. I need to get rid of the participant list because um, run, 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 because so used to running this. Hang on, let me get this down here. The Visual Studio is, by the way, it makes creating this stuff. We do need something like this on Risk OS. It's for breakpointing and things. It's it's incredible. Um, so it's all the same. Uh, it's, everything's the same. All the all the demos and things are the same. Same source code. So the different types of error handling. Because this was in the original version, I didn't like. Because I was trying to create the languages as well as all the runtime, and it was difficult. So I created things to help my to make my life easier. The debugger being one, so I could see what code is being generated. The other one is to see errors. So if we have, we all know this, but I'm just trying to show how it works. So the syntax errors are pretty pretty simple. I did earlier, I did print or something. Um, let me do a list, and if I run it, I get a syntax error. But the thing is, it it the way that the parser works is it will tell you at which point. So if I correct <coughs> that error, we go, I don't know, lots of stuff, and something later on the line. So if we do B string equals A plus, and that's a, that's a valid code. That, that, that is a valid code. And I do run, you see we get, so the first one was a syntax error. Um, and, it, and again, so you see that it, it highlighted exactly where the, it had a problem with the syntax. And then you get the compiler error. Again, it's at the plus 10. So it, at that point, it's got confused. And it'll check out up to five, I think I've got it set to. So if you loaded a big source file riddled with errors, it will give you the top five errors in that file at exactly the point. So it'll print out the line. And it'll put a little arrow at the, at the point that the error occurred. So that's 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 really nice because when I'm so when I'm when I'm changing my syntax, I load my tester in files example equals tester. So if I break something further down in the file here, and I'll just put a random thing on the end of that. That's not valid. Save that and then. Examples load tester. If I hit sh hold the shift key, it does the pausing of the scrolling. So you see the scrolling's a lot slower on Windows than it is on, on RISC OS. So there's the file with all my all my tests to make sure that I don't break the language between versions. How many lines have I got in there? 300? It's quite a lot. You, you can actually see the structured, I think, uh, can you nearly see the structured type stuff? So structured types. 
uh, going off tangent slightly, is where we can do, and by the way, it's not all uppercase. You can have uppercase, lowercase, or camel case. I like camel case. So I can have a type, and I could call this a coordinate, say, and I can define it as an X and a Y and a Z. And then I can, re then I can refer to elements of that structure type, basically, you know, C struct type stuff. So, so let me run this now, and this should be an invalid file. Aha, there you go. Um, so it picked up line 750, where I did extra F. So it got confused after that. And it picked up another error, well, later on, probably as a consequence of that. And then it picked up the 100A on line, on line 80, character 49. So that's pretty nice. And it'll do it on all, uh, if you install a bunch of files as well, it'll do it on, you know, you could cascade and cascade down and including files and it'll figure out where the error occurs. Um, took a little bit of, <laughs> Took a little bit of working out how to do that, but I'm quite, I'm quite, I'm quite proud of the result. So if I do new, so the, the final one is runtime. So I can't pick these up at compilations. If I dimension an array of ten elements, um, now I can do hang on, caps lock, caps lock. So perfectly, perfectly valid. And if I run that, if I do fifty print. So that's all fine. We can go and have a look at the disassembly. There's, a, there's my disassembly for it. And we should have a variable. There we go. It's an array, A with 11 entries in it. Um, so if we make this invalid. Now I copied the BBC basic thing about it. Adds an extra element onto arrays when it creates them. And I think that's because other people can start with one numbering or zero. I'm not decided which I'm doing yet, but I think I'm probably gonna go with one. To be controversial. So if we do that, that should, there we go. So at that point then it hits the VM and the VM chucks an error out and it tells me it's at line 20 and position nine, which which isn't quite right, but that's not that's not bad because at this point of course the VM doesn't have the source code. It's it's basically byte codes, but I do store the line and character position of, of errors. I've been working a lot recently on catching everything. So it gives you an error rather than just crashing out because nobody wants something to crash out. So it picks up, I mean, there's dozens, hundreds of errors. It picks up in there. Um, so that's good. Graphics wise, um, it's pretty flexible. That's, that's a 1080p window scaled up and stuff because I've got a 4K monitor, but that's a 1080p window. But I can go for retro ish and it does 64480. I can even, I think I can even go as low as something like that <laughs> if I really want to. So um, that's all pretty nice. And then we can go back to what I had before. There we go. The interactive stuff works as you would expect. Sacrilege, I know, but origin is top left, not bottom left. So I can draw a line, I can draw a circle, or I can make a field. See, I love, I love throwing keywords in here because I'm not very good at remembering arcane parameters to things. So I, I like it nice and simple so I can understand. Circle, filled, thousand across. 300 down, 100. Oh, so called fill. There you go. Circle, change the color. It's only one color. It isn't a graphics color and text color. So as soon as you change it, uh, circle. Color blue, or you can do RGB or RGBA. And again, we can do a triangle fill from. 50, 50, it's what, 250, uh, 100. I don't know if this is going to be valid. You can try it. There we go. So got, that's not red, though. That's not blue. That's red. So there's definitely something not quite right there. But there's a triangle fill. All the sprite rendering and everything else. And the 3D stuff mixes in with the 2D. So you, ba you basically issue an, a render, use a render keyword, and it mixes in with whatever, so you could have an overlay on top of 3D or you could have stuff under 3D, not, you know, totally flexible in that regard. Um, 
so that's that's version five. Now I am, but in version six, I am going to be moving away a bit from that syntax because I need to support sets and maps and lists and all these all these other things. So one thing I'm going for is explicit uh, types when you create variables. So you know, in the eighties, you just went. Let's well, go back to you. Uh, so back in the 80s, you can just do that. Well, no, because it's an array in this case, but if I do that, you know, I'm printing AA. Uh, but now in version six, I'm moving that you have to specify AA and a type, whatever, but I'm not going to bore you with that today because that's the, that's the next in version one, next version in development. Um, it does support all the things. Uh, so you can input, uh, what is your name and fake age? So I tried to keep as much compatibility as possible. You know, and you can print those out. Of course you can hit F10 and hit debugger and it gives you all the all the all the variables and stuff that are going on. And trace log. Should we try trace? I haven't used this in a while, so it may not actually work. What have I got here? Five trace on run. Will I get there you go. So there's a little bit of the, the logging there, push constant onto the stack. So this is really a VM level. But those yeah, numbers, yeah. it's right, it's pretty deep down, but these numbers are line number statement and various things. But so that's that's right at the bottom of it. Um I think I'm probably done. Um uh, one thing I might try quickly, see if this oh I never showed you fake windows on Risk OS. It's exactly the same. Um, call it fake windows because this is where I start thinking about GUIs in 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 here. And give this a moment. Let me just. I should show you all the demos. Really, it will get there. It's taking its time. I haven't broken it, have I? Maybe I've broken it. Possible broken something. Let me just fire it back up and do it again. And should be a bit quicker than that. So um, yes, I think I think I've probably shown everything I want to show on that. Um, aha, there we go. Sorry, it's just overlaying various because it's using clipping regions and things to create the impression that there's three windows going on there. I don't know how well that comes through on Zoom. And again, like BBC Basic, you can hit the escape key and it quits back out. Did I just knew it? I did, I just cleared it. And sprites, this one is the one that doesn't work on Risk OS. It's so quick on here because Windows have got hardware acceleration. These things are probably way too quick for you to see clearly, but they move around really, really quickly. And I'm going to, there we go. I think that's what I wanted to show. Any questions? Uh, there are a few questions in the chat. Okay, let me, let me open that up. Um, so that's the part, yeah, the, the computer I'm running that bit, the thing earlier on was a Pi 400 which is an excellent machine. It's really nice. Uh, the, all the older stuff was done on a Pi 2. Uh, it's only recently got this. I mean, literally, I treat myself to this, I think, like a, six weeks ago or something. Um, did I finish his Arch game? No. <laughs> I got sidetracked creating a program language or you know, copying a program language and then extending it. Uh, performance. So the big, the big thing, I would say the difference between Windows and Risk OS performance-wise isn't so much the graphics, because I'm not using much acceleration. I mean, I'm not building Unity or the gaming toolkits here. I'm not interested in creating a hardware accelerated library. But uh, Risk OS stuff as anything is is CPU on on the machine because it's you know the arms are nice, but it, this thing's got a Ryzen eight core thing in it. Um, so that's the main area. Uh, things like compilation stuff, obviously, it's way, way, way quicker than Windows because you got the eight cores and all the memory and stuff to go with it. But that's not a fair comparison because this is the beast that was a hundred quid. So, um, 
the so they're, they're date owner or virtual fighter i would say probably there is a fair bit you can do with software rendering I mean, those games are from the 90s, I think. But this is, the Pi has got a reasonably fast chip in it. So it may well be fast enough. If you chuck it around solid, solid filled polygons, it, it works pretty, pretty quickly. It depth check, you know, it does the, the various optimizations in there for 3D. So I hope so. Am I in the, are you into the demo scene? I was, uh, but I'm not sure now. <laughs> plot 69, plot A5, yeah. I'm not very good at those kind of, I can never remember. I've got the books behind me, of course. You know, the old, yeah, the old, uh, but uh, I do refer to them sometimes. I haven't got the, uh, the PRM, so not yet. Um, but I think I've covered the question. Did I port it for master one to eight? That sits, oh, it's in the other room, still, still plugged in and working, but I haven't picked it up for ages. So that, that started all this. Um, and I started entry programs on there, but, but let's be honest, the screen's a bit, it's a bit low resolution in comparison. So I switched over to Risk OS and never really gone, never gone back to it. Uh, I'll do, actually, I've got a couple of slides. Um, I completely forgot because I'm all over the place. But let me just do the last couple of slides and I might, and then we'll do definitely do final questions. Share. Yeah. Okay, screen one. And. Put the chat somewhere so I can see it. So future plans and ideas. So I'm moving away from classic syntax so I can do all this fancy stuff. I want an uh, OO, I would say not OO, more like structured types with a little bit of syntactic sugar on top to make them nice. So when, if I have entities and I want to work out collisions, what I don't want to do is poll each one in turn. It'd be nice to have some kind of call a function you know or procedure when, when something happens uh indirect gui so this is this, you saw the debugger it's quite straightforward but it would be nice to have a bit more functionality in there so inside like inside that that environment so it feels like it belongs there so i want to add some stuff to that and i also want buttons and things i can click because the last thing i want to do is drawing them by hand and using mouse to get the x y and you know, that's pretty tedious um Platform native GUI, somebody mentioned, I think it was Paolo. So some way of creating, now this is, this is pipe dream. This is, this is a nice to have. Uh, let's not underestimate how much work it is, but, but using direct to create basically desktop wind applications, that would be nice with a GUI builder, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to maintain parity. So that's that's my goal. So we're running either. Be nice. Be nice if the current issues are sorted out, which I think is my. Oh, no, no. So yeah. Final thought. Um, it isn't. It isn't a replay. I, I don't. BBC Basic is the kind of scripting language of the operating system, and it can do things that Derek will never better do because it's fully dynamically typed and does all these kind of magic, and it's got SWI and VDU. And I could try and implement all that, but what's the point? Because it's it's not going anywhere. It's still there. This is for different stuff. It's the same as uh, Boost Basic Windows and the SDL version. No, they they are trying to keep syntactic. They, you know, the syntax is 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 compatible. Uh, it's a completely different thing, really. I'm. This is basically a play thing for me that just happens, I think, to be interesting to other people. Um, but it will go in a completely different direction. It will not. It will. It will it'll have a. It, it'll look a little bit like BBC Basic syntax, but. It, It'll be different enough to be something new. Oh, and I've got a web page that has no downloads right now because who wants to download a broken <laughs> risk OS version? So I need, to, I need to wait until the compiler fixes. I have the source is available. I wasn't sure about this. I decided to what the hell. So people can go and have a look at it if they really want to do. Uh, because I've embedded and the full source code in there um, because I needed to make some changes for risk OS. So I figured, okay, you know. This is an open source project embedded in another one. Let's just stick it, stick it out there. I don't think anybody would ever look at it, but it's there anyway. And now I'm definitely done. <laughs> I'll leave them there quickly before I turn else as enthusiastic. But I'm really looking forward to uh, to doing a game in it, and I think it's it's really really cool. So really really good work. Very impressed. Um, what I like is the interactivity. I think that's something you don't always see. 
And the other thing is, if you have a common mode of operation, you open up the opportunity for people to use it on Windows, and it will just work on Risk OS and let people play there. So it's another doorway in, which is great. That, but, yeah. yeah, I have to agree with you, uh, Tony. I have to, because that is my, uh, that's, that's what I'm thinking, because if I do my projects, I'll probably build them on, on my Windows machine. It's, it's more accessible. It's got browsers and anything else. That, that, so I will build that, but, the, but it, to, be, to be able to take that source code, because what I did earlier is I have messaged Brian and, uh, email Brian and said it doesn't work. <laughs> Everything's broken. Is I uh, recompiled everything and copied over, and I just took the latest version. The example I just took the it direct straight over, and as you saw, it ran perfectly well. So that that's that is my goal. That's why I'm not going down the hardware acceleration route for things and trying to do too fancy. So if I want to do texture polygons, which I want to, I have to have it in software, and it has to work exactly the same on Risk OS as on Windows. Obviously, the performance is different. We we get that, but for most you know, of like indie level games, I don't think it really matters. You know? No, um, you've got to set your sights reasonably. You can get like, you never get anything finished, potentially. Yes. Was, one thing I was curious about, what is your approach to memory management? And because like, it's, it's a key design issue in a language. I've written a few professionally at work for various things. How are you, how are you managing that? Uh, are, we, are we talking about uh, the language level itself? Because inside, because I don't, I don't, I mean, in, in the actual source code, for Derek, I don't particularly, I don't do new and delete and malloc particularly. No. So uh, you question is, are you tracking references or is um, it garbage plan? So think. I leave it, so I leave it basically up to the direct source code to handle its own objects. Um, there is a, there is a, so slightly technical, I, I used to have a, a VM that would reset itself. So you would do, uh, every time you compiled, it would rebuild the VM. With all the variables in it, but that that killed interactivity because every time you entered something something from the command, and there are some things that would never be able to be done from that interactive prompt because creating functions and things because they need to be compiled at a certain point, and and that's the risk that the, the sort of downside of byte of by, by code and. But, I, I think it's the right pattern because the criticism I think around C sharp or I'm, myself or colleagues is a garbage collection. It's not predictable, and yeah. it, something I think it's better to keep it simple. Well, I think that's quite true. Yeah. Uh, there is basically no garbage collection. There isn't any, really. The VM, uh, so it has a variable. So if some, if uh, if you create an array of a certain size and create another array with the same variable name, it will dispose of the other one, but it disposes of it instantly. It's not like there's a, it's not, yeah. because it's, it's C++ under the hood. So there is no garbage collection and no pause as a result. Memory, if you, uh, if you load a, uh, fonts are an exception, but if you load a sprite into memory or you load uh, various, um, yeah, a font is an example, you're then responsible for freeing it up because you get a handle to it and it's in a list, you know, handle zero, handle one, handle two. You've got to free that thing up as a as a Derek. But you, I would say 99% of the time you would never free it up because you would load all your 3D objects in and they just stay memory until you quit. It's, I think it's a reasonable design scope. You create problems around it, but it's a key issue in languages in general, is how do you manage memory? Mm -hmm. When I designed a feature about 10 years ago in a language, I made it impossible to have array bounds over or uninitialized memory reads because it was a condition critical thing. But you know, in this instance, I wouldn't worry. I think you can let people play and make it fun and not try to make it too restrictive. I've just got um, assembly code or just a, a block of memory, mm -hmm. but I think if you're offering something different, then yeah, I mean, I, I work on obviously I'm using it like you know, back. yeah. Uh, and I just based that, I just based it on my own experience, I suppose, because even building Derek, there's a lot of structures and stuff in mm -hmm. there, and I I don't want to be managing memory for those things, so I do it in the obvious obvious way. I don't think it's happening really. <laughs> Unless I say, as I say, I I change modes, so I I don't have that issue in the games that I write because I'm. Kind of used to it, but um, for something like this, I, I think it's just you absolutely have to use all the available tools. Oh, cool. Yeah, and, and I always have this thing in mind is that if I if it's if if somebody's going to build something serious, they probably are going to go and hit C plus C sharp, sorry, or Java or whatever. So, yes, let's not. We there's no point even denying that with a, with a huge libraries and stuff to go with it. But I like the simplicity of having a hundred keywords to and that and that's it. That's a language, you know. Something it depends nice. on the problem you're solving, doesn't it? Because in the case of doing the single processor, it's I've got a C project called Wavebox I did, it's about 20,000 lines of code. And then with RDSP, it's about 500 lines of code to do the audio. Because the language determines sometimes the scale. Mm -hmm. 
I think in terms of the problem you're solving, it will just work better in C++. I, I can completely see that's the right pattern for it. Yeah. I, I moved from C, plus C to C++ because C, um, and there is a whole debate there, and I don't want to get in debates. There's the flame wars out there. No, it's called all this, is it? But, but I, like, I, like, I like the idea of, of safety without the penalty, if you like. And I find C to be a little bit easy to shoot yourself in the foot. I don't know how many lines of code there is. Some of my projects at work are kind of in the region of 50,000 lines plus. And if you've got some unsafe thing in there that causes it to crash every two hours for knowing it, it's annoying. It depends on the problem you're solving, I would say. Mm -hmm. so I, I typically go between about five or six different languages at work, like, like you do. And yeah. the languages have their own strengths, their own particular paradigm. But uh, yes, C++ has a lot of good things. Yeah. I think, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get into a language debate, but I think it was C++ has, a, has an unfair reputation for being really heavy, and it actually isn't. When, when it, I, the I, compilers I, are. Kind of your side on that one, just saying that different problems. Mm. Um, yeah. I'll let somebody else talk now. I'll, I'll be fine. Silence. That's a, that's a good thing, I guess. Sorry, I was on mute. Actually, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> so the... <laughs> Apologies, guys. I had a long day. Um, did you actually had any uh, look at the Xamus uh, project that has been ported to RISCOS? Uh, which project? Xamus. Apologies. Oh no, no, I haven't. But but if that's anything like Amos the Amiga, uh, it's probably yeah, yeah. very. It, mm. Actually, it's probably interesting for you because it's the uh, reconstruction of the Amos based. Mm -hmm. In C++, so it's probably yeah. something. Uh, and it's been put, I think uh, Chris Granson did the port, although if actually mm. the original x Amos code was already available for RISCOS, but then it was abandoned. So I think, I, I'm not sure what, what are the dynamics there, but yeah, um, it, it's available for, for free download. Um, and it probably, you know, have a look at it. Probably quite similar, because I'm inspired by Blitz, and Blitz is inspired by Amos. They're all this similar family of, graphical basics i suppose um although the one thing about blitz that i i didn't i didn't like and i, I didn't want in this was the compile step so uh, it's 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 relatively easy for go, to go from say basic syntax to a c plus to a c syntax and then you know it's transpile it but you end up with a, with a pause and i remember my projects i'd hit f5 and i'd have to sit there while it compiled and if that was 30 seconds that was 30 seconds too long i like that instant now I've not tested with ten thousand lines of Derek, but uh, uh, it, I mean it should be should be pretty quick. But you know, because once you kick out to a C compiler, it has to go through the optimization steps and load files from disk and write temporary files, and yeah, and you lose. As far as I'm concerned, you lose that interactivity. And you it did have a debugger, but it wasn't wasn't very good either. That's that's core cool for me. I want to be able to pause at any point, see what's in memory, change things around, and continue from. I did have an idea that. Of being able to change code as running, as in, but I, I mean, future, future. Yeah. Right. Another question is because we, we live in, as you mentioned, um, uh, 2021. So, about libraries, how mm -hmm. Darek handles libraries, how manage libraries, obviously, source libraries. Can you also have binary libraries? No, not yet. Um, this is so you got the I basically stolen the basic install command. So yeah, that just that's basically an include, isn't it? It's like hashtag including C. So that that will pull in. But it'll it it's it'll do it'll cascade through as many files as you want. It's intelligent not not to bring stuff in twice. So that that's that's but that's source. Binary I haven't got it. I I did put a on one of the earlier slides like a batteries included thing because I, I don't want it to people to say oh it won't run until I've installed library X. Okay, let me go out and install that that's annoying for me. I like everything being being there originally, but it would be nice if other people can add stuff to the language somehow. Um, so I have thought about it, but I haven't come up with an idea just yet. But I, because I've got full control basically with the whole compiler and parser and everything else, there's no reason why 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 not. I'm gonna call. Night. Night. All right. Night. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yes, it, it would be nice to, because I want to do, there's lots of things I want to do, but what it, I also put on an earlier slide was I wanted to, I want to get to a certain like stability is a language, the thing doesn't change, but I also want to add on networking, uh, and other bits 
what I don't want to do is have to release the whole thing. It'd be nice to have a modular. So I'm still working on it. It's still quite young. It's only really a year old at most. Um, but I'm doing all these next next step is these syntactic changes that will probably make people a bit grumpy, but is unfortunately required to add stuff to the language unless I want to because I, I thought about opening the box of punctuation and symbol and you can end up with curly brace followed by angle bracket, you know. It, yeah, I don't like I don't like that. Yeah, we can't because I say I mean I do C plus plus all the time at work. You kind of don't want to. It has its benefits, but I, I feel like it would take something away from it, wouldn't it? Mm. Make it less compact. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of symbols and things. You can see from the language, it's all. You know, I've got... I, I imagine, I imagine you don't also want to go to the extensive syntax of COBOL, which you didn't no. have any, any any symbol. You know, it's proper English language, but <laughs> yeah, add, add one to X. No, there's, there's a happy space in the middle, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> But I imagine all these syntactic things changes. So I don't, what I don't want to do is have like a, a, a classic version with the old syntax and the new version. I just want one version. So I'll probably end up, the one that is there at the moment is very similar to BBC Basic. If I, I'll, I mean, I could show you the syntax. I'm coming up for the new one, but it's not that interesting. On variable assignment, basically, you've got to put a colon and the type. So A colon. But you can still keep the percent and the dollar. So actually, it works quite well. Does that make sense? So later on, you still refer to it as a percent, you know, for a for integer a. So or name string, and so it's actually only on the initial bit, but that allows me then to add in some really cool kind of extra bits and pieces. I'm not making major major changes. It's like oh, like object oriented syntax will be on top of. The one thing I did do is I got rid of functions and procedures and just had procedures because they're essentially special cases of one or the other, isn't it? So a procedure function is just a procedure with a return type. So I. That's probably only everything else. You could still type regular syntax without the line numbers as you would on a, on, you know, basic five, and it would it's pretty similar. That's my goal to keep it. In terms of like scope of language, because think you've got like paradigms. The AGK there's a, not many commands in the core language. Lua has a very simple paradigm, but the thing I really don't like about Lua, I don't ever used it, is that the, 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 the typing is horribly flexible, and you can refer to things that don't exist. It really annoys me. Yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, in terms of the scope of the dialect, have you got, a, you know, in terms of intrinsic complexity, have you got some design limits or where, like, you know, making it for this management for yourself? Uh, I'm, well, I'm not going to write a design document because this is a, my, my pet project. I do enough of that stuff at work. But I have an idea um, of what it will be. It is basically an, an sort of enhanced basic. I, and variables have to be defined. Yeah. And you can't then redefine a variable. So there are some things that are fixed. If I define, and I, I don't use single letter variables because I mean, they're great for typing, but they're not great for something long lived. Loops, fine. So uh, variables live forever with a name and you can't change the type. And that that's because I that for me makes me build better software. But how many keywords? I mean, as I say, if that kind of, because I, I, I think you're right, making things descriptive is a good idea. Yeah. See how that, that grows. But it comes down to when you constrain the use of a name mm -hmm. in the core language, uh, you know what I mean? It's I know what you mean. Uh, the keywords I've, I've added are quite long, generally. Load typeface, that's a pretty, I mean, it's unlikely to clash. But because it's also, because of the way the parser works, you uh, there is let, um, which sets global variables. So, but you can have let as a variable name perfectly happily because it needs a space or punctuation or whatever afterwards. So I haven't had any real problems with clashing because I create vertex, you know, uh, and things like triangle and stuff are pretty standard anyway. Uh, so not, yes, I'm aware of that. So I'm not going for short keywords that, that are going to clash with variables and, and annoy. And I haven't had a problem yet in all the examples I've done. I've used, I use the standard I, J, K for loops. Um, you know, but there's some nice things in the types are quite nice, the structured types. I'm going to extend that. I mean, and again, they're not new, um, but, be, but I had for my 3D stuff, being able to create a, you know, vector three uh, x y z as one object and refer to it as dot x dot y dot z that's that's nice that's you know it makes rather than using the playing and going into dimension blocks of memory and what would you like a drink can i have a cup of tea can I, yeah can i have a fruit juice please okay. yeah please sorry <laughs> um so i don't know where i was there talking about dimensioning right. yeah so structures types are quite nice 
you've kind of got a, a core set in mind and you've got some key extensions you're playing. Yes. And I, um, so I did have a help page and I got rid of it because it was quite weird. I actually had, a, I had, I had a quite a bit of online help done. There was a page that came up and it showed you all the keywords that, that are in the language. So my, my, my ethos is really that don't add them unless I want 2D, 3D, audio, possibly networking. I might have allowed myself to use keyboards, but everything else, no, it has to be library code. Whether that's probably proc or probably some variation on the structured syntax, I've come, I'm not, you know, something like that, because what we don't want to do is muddy it with a million keywords. But I'm not afraid of also sprinkling a few. So some sort of compromise. And you're staying away from including pointers. Uh, no pointers. Uh, I think you'll make some people happy with that. I don't like pointers. It's far too. I don't use pointers. I use in, in the source code for it. I very rarely use pointers. Um, it's too easy to shoot yourself. Hmm. And I like the argument, by the way. A lot of people say that oh, you just—it's just because you're not a very good coder. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's not, uh, yeah, it's not, I mean, not quite that simple. Yeah, <laughs> you know. It, um, the question is whether you need to do something and you have to work out the justification for it. I mean, yeah. I'm comfortable with pointers because I do a, used to quite a bit of assembler. Mm -hmm. it, it, I don't think it's a friendly thing. and It's a source no. of errors as well. No, it is. And I, I, I use Rust a lot to build pretty big projects in Rust. Rust I like, but it, there, is, there is a steep learning curve to it. That one, of course, has no garbage collection and no memory management as such. And it's all about references to things. It's very clever. Um, and you, it, it basically, I, lo I like the idea that if it compiles, it runs. Gen generally yes. speaking, you know, there that's is a good, that's a good uh, desired paradigm, I would say. Which I've got indirect to an extent. I mean, because you see the errors, is I want to catch as many of those, as many errors as I possibly can before I get to runtime. So I, I'm just wondering whether I should let you. you know, I, I'm making sure you do your outrun games. I'm staying away from the outrun type. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's not helpful. But I, I just, as I say. I'll maybe let you know when it's okay for me to write on something. Yeah, I do want to get it to a point. This, this this thing to a point where it could be, you know, used. And I have got some pet personal projects in my own. And I bear in mind, I want to do my own personal projects. And Derek has sort of taken over for the last six, twelve months. So I want to get to a point where I start to use it for what I originally created it for. Video game is a great test bed for a language because mm -hmm. they're quite intensive and they can cover quite a few fundamental bases. Yeah. I'd agree with that. It's a good excuse to do a game. So, so I can imagine because uh, you you mentioned uh, you mentioned multiple time uh, that um, you you know you focus on C plus plus eleven. So I but but the lack of pointers means that you didn't use any smart pointers as well. There are uh, the some, logic. There are some, uh, but some where I was forced to essentially, but very few shared pointers. I think there's a few a handful. And that's generally, I'm not going to, I don't want to avoid too much of the details, generally in the VM when I'm going to get variables and I'm referencing the contents of those variables, having a pointer is less safe than having a shared one. And I didn't see many impacts, so that's about the only place. Everyone else, I use const references and things. And, yeah. and then just a curiosity, so the, the Windows version, so what's the size of an int compared to the risk cost version? Because obviously in Windows now you have by default everything is 64 bit. So unless you force... Um... Uh, well, the Windows binary is, is, is smaller than the risk cost binary for some reason. Let's just look. 1.8 well, meg. That depends on the... Yeah, the uh, 1.8 meg, but um, probably when it expands out into memory. I know on this list I got it to run in two because I've used you know, the Wimp slot set, set slot. And you're running two with some early testing. So I... I'm not. I'm not here to make it run on a one meg. No, I'm not interested. But I, I do want. I do want to know that it's not running away with memory. Oh be. sure, no. But my question was more like an int in in Daric. What is is actually? Oh, um, it is a 32-bit number, uh, unsigned in. Uh, no, sorry, signed in. It's it's the same. It should be the same on both. I I didn't want to go longs and ints and floats, and doubles. So I've got a float. A floats a double actually. But I didn't want lots of choices because uh, it's it's annoying. We don't need a char type, particularly. We've got strings. String and one character is a char. We don't need booleans because we've got integers of, I mean, it's all perfectly fine. It's just extra stuff for people to learn. Um, and I keep, I, you know, you can see the input magazines behind me on the shelf there. And I always try and keep in the back of my head, 
is this is this going to be simple for somebody? Not that I'm expecting new, you know, new new programmers to go and use it, but I'm keeping that in my back of mind. Keep it simple, unless it has to be complicated. Oh, no, it makes total sense. It's it's basic, right? So it has to you know be yeah. for for everyone. Yeah. As again, it's just curiosity on how you you, you uh, decided to face certain problems that are going to be there, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, you have to remember as well, I think that because it was risk OS first, really, some of the decisions were made based on based on that, because that's where it all, it all started. So I guess, yeah, I, mean, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Into 32 bits, doubles, you know, uh, I, it seems fine for me. So. But I can add more types because the whole, because of the way it built. We can, yeah. we can add more types, but I don't want to add them unless I absolutely have to. So in my case, unfortunately, I had to spend some, some time making sure that the types between RISCOS and, and Linux or Windows are compatible mm -hmm. um, with a fourth compiler that I'm working on. Um, another basic, uh, an object oriented a basic that I've been working on by like you know, 10 years and never released those results. I, I do some work, then I stop, I get bored, and then I do it again. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the unfortunately, the, the, the data type representation was has always been a bit of a pain, mm -hmm. uh, partially because there can be, you know, NDNS differences, mm -hmm. uh, partially because obviously uh, Windows uh, identify always with the latest and greatest. So you have to make sure that you either downgrade or, for example, in Fort, I had to use the concept of double cell. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the cell is 32 bit, and then to have a 64 bit cell, I had to use the concept of double cell. Yeah, I, I am familiar with this one of these because I hit some of those issues when I was uh, wide Unicode 16 bit characters and all the rest of it. Um, and I and I and Derek is is modern zero terminated, you know, it's strings rather than rather than having a length and a, and a string, which means you can't stuff binary data and things into there. But I'll have other constructs to, to do that same thing. Because uh, I just thought, I mean, there's no, there's no benefit to that, really. The direct version one and two did do that, did do it properly, but no longer. So if you stuff a zero into a string, it will, it'll turn a, you know. But yes, there are some issues. I mean, I'm a little annoyed that it's not running perfectly on risk but I'm actually also, myself, but it is nice to think that somebody could pick the Windows version up, write some code, and then it runs for free. No, no, it, it's great. I mean, the demo was, was really impressive and it's definitely a big, big, big step forward mm -hmm. compared to, you know, uh, what you can do with just BBC Basic without introducing mm -hmm. assembly. It also introduced my next question. <laughs> because <laughs> on the forum, uh, our lovely community sometimes can be <laughs> very opinionated. But we all know that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, will you make it, make it available as it was in BBC Basic, the ARM assembly, would you make it available, the, the bytecode, some, some bytecode assembly? Because for example, in Lua, we have DynaASM, which uh, is a mm -hmm. dynamic assembly. Uh, yeah, in BBC yeah. Basic, we have the ARM, so. Um, I guess I guess there's no reason why not. Um, well, I do want to JIT it at some point, but of course, in a list of priorities, that's, that's lower down than actually completing the language. And, oh, sure. Um, I don't see any reason why it can't be I mean, you saw that it's, it's standard uh, stack yeah. bytecodes, load, store. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a bunch of specific bytecodes for line as a bytecode. Why not? You know. Um, but yes, I mean, it's all documented in the source code, but don't see why. Can't do it in line. I don't know what it would give you, but uh, I guess for, for fun I reasons. I think you'll find out when you start to have application with many libraries and you know more than mm -hmm. 1, 1,000 lines of code. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I would say that um, this has been an interesting project. Probably, I don't know, is it the most difficult one I've ever attempted? Maybe the compilation to bytecode is is because taking source code and giving that to something so simple, because uh, case statements and things is oh, it's it's interesting how I jump around and check things because you've got to do it in an efficient way as well. And there's some there's some logic in there. But it, as it, as each version went through. Version six, which is the current one, is so much cleaner than it was in version three, four. You know, it's, got, it's got better because there was all sorts of weird bugs, but now it's much cleaner. And I mean, I know that's it's a programmer's thing; they always want to make everything better. No, I, I think that's good that you're actually because I presume when you're going through iterations, you're basically well, mostly starting again, aren't you? You're just sort of core parts. Dude, um, not necessarily because I've taken a lot. So once I did the core bits and pieces, I changed so. Uh, 
in a compiler of expression. Sure. In version five, I had numeric expressions and string expressions that were separate. They were totally separate. Yeah, you wouldn't now, have read about that. That's now cool. I've combined them into one thing called expressions, and as a result, the parser is way, way, way simpler. But it catches, it works just as well. But there's a good um, paradigm, which is when you develop, you kind of get rid of your prototype and you move on to something yeah. new. You get rid of technical debt and you um, make it simpler. But some things you should never rewrite. Expression, uh, expression parsers are only painful. No, I'm, I, the, I, V6 is the one, let's call it version six, that'll be the one. That'll be, that'll be the one that, that gets, because that's the one that'll have all the object. Well, no, I, I don't want to call it LO, because that brings nightmares to mind of some, comp but really it's structures with, with functions and things on it. So that, that'll be the one, you know. It's getting quite, I think it's getting close to being a thing. I haven't even, I know audio is your, is your thing. I, haven't, I still haven't approached audio yet, but if that's the only thing left, I think I'm doing well. Yes, definitely. It could work stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Work stuff's all but you can't mention it to anybody. Not that I'm looking for a job just yet, but just in case. Uh, shall I have a look at any? I haven't done the. I haven't looked at the chat thing at all already. Um, website's been uh, website's been slash dotted. Possibly it's only running on a Heroku tiny instance. Uh, yeah. Use basic for Windows, I've used that. Um, one question I'm pretty sure the community will ask because it's it's something that I, I always get from bars of it. Mm -hmm. Hardware control. <laughs> how how you manage or have you any idea yet how you will allow direct hardware access from direct? Uh, as, in, as in calling it from outside? You mean? Is well, that... no, I mean, uh, Basically, I mean, actually, I, I really wish to have at some point a chat with the community with what they mean with keep, I want to keep control of the system. Um, mm. But basically accessing uh, somehow hardware, uh, which I never think it's a good idea without a proper API. Yeah. But, I don't know yet. I, did have, I, have, I have got VDU in there somewhere, although I think the code I haven't checked in a while. But um, some things are better than the BBC Basic. But... Um, and also because it's cross platforms, it might get a bit. Some stuff might get a bit strange because it's okay. unique or risk OS. So I'll I'll just take a call. A video would be useful. I mean, I've got that in there, but I just it's, it's old and I don't think it works, or I've removed it or whatever. But some of these things are better run from the basic anyway because it can do magic with variables and return you know values and stuff, which I can't. Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know somebody said about family stuff. I might have to do some family stuff for the minute because all my kids are going, are going to bed, but I can always come back after. Um, uh, Backronym, Daryl's or refined instruction code. Yeah, that's where I can't remember who suggested it. I'm not really, I, I feel a bit bad now. Somebody suggested it. I thought that's great because it's my name, basic, basically, isn't it? And it's, it's easy to say as well, Derek. Yeah, sounds like a person. Okay, I might go and see if everyone check if my family are okay in a minute. I'll come back. Right. In that case, Daryl, I'll pop in and just say thank you very much for coming along and giving a fascinating demo. And we're Welcome. all looking forward to seeing kind of the final version when we can actually play with it ourselves. Well, I've got a little bit silent on Twitter. I was posting a lot at one point. I've got a little bit silent recently because I've been doing this version six. So I want to get that to a, to a point. Um, It'll look the same. It'll just work a little differently syntax-wise. And that's the one I want to make available. Could I fix this bug though first? C++. Yeah, that bug. might not be your, it's not, not your bug to fix, is, is it? Uh, no, I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> but it generally runs, I mean, many of us run Windows machines and stuff as well anyway. So it's not a complete loss. And the code will still run on RISC-OS. So if someone creates a direct file, they can run it on. There is problems with it because it uses GCC8 and you know, shared libraries and stuff. There's a bit of nastiness on that, but nothing that can't be resolved. Yeah, we're getting there with that, I think. Oh, well, but I'm just going to go and check everyone's okay. We'll open it up to general chat. I'm sure we'll be around for a while, so all we'll right. see you again in a bit. I'll see you all in a minute. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very nice presentation.